This is Dr. Quinlan with Quinlan Chiropractic Clinic from Coppell, Texas, and you're listening to the Dunham Business Radio Show. Hi there, this is Lori Dunham with Dunham Business Radio. We won the 2019 Gray Bowl Show of the Year. We also got an award for community service, and I can't thank you enough for all of your support. We are on the next level, and we're going higher, and I can't do it without you, and I'm so grateful. Thank you so much, and stay tuned in. Hi, everybody. This is Lori with Dunham Business Radio. I am super excited about what's coming up here this summer. We are going on the next level. And you know what? We're doing it for you. You helped us grow. You helped our numbers just increase. And we're making an impact on entrepreneurs all around the world. We're coming to North American cities near you. And I am super excited to announce that we are collaborating with CK Productions, an award-winning film production company out of New York City. We're filming a documentary that will depict the journey of the entrepreneur. You know, we've come through an amazing time in 2020. We survived, but you know, there's a lot of businesses out there that need help and we are on the forefront and we wanna help them. Right now, we're looking for your contribution, your help to make this amazing project happen. We want to put a focus on small businesses, especially after the crazy year we have all endured. If you've been listening to Lori's radio program, you know what a powerful storyteller she is and how she connects people and local leaders in businesses. So consider making a donation to make the ripple effect a reality. Support this event and this amazing documentary because it highlights the superheroes in our country. From day to day, people go in from nine to five, but business owners go in, as we know, from eight to eight. Those 12 hour days that we go day after day, there's no weekends, there's no vacations. And during the pandemic, we've done everything we could to stay open. A lot have closed their doors and maybe this event will inspire them to reopen or help each other learn how to succeed in business in the future. Costs a lot of money to bring an event like this to your city. And we're asking for your help, your financial contribution. Please dig down deep, help us to make a ripple effect and a positive impact in the lives of small businesses and entrepreneurs right there in your hometown. In addition to supporting a bunch of small businesses around the country, we're also looking to support local nonprofits in each one of our amazing cities we'll be visiting. A portion of all of our ticket sales will be donated directly to these local nonprofits so they can continue making a difference within their communities. So at the end of the day, if you're riding on the fence of whether or not you should attend this event or even step up to the plate and be a part of it, I mean, you never know where it's gonna take you. The people that you meet, and the people that uh, you get close to and create a network with, well, that could eventually become your net worth. So being in a room of like-minded people, like-minded individuals who have a goal, who have a dream, who want to grow in, in their business and just being in the space where you can get a piece of that and catch some fire that might propel you to where you want to go, um, that is, that's priceless, really. We are giving back to our supporters both here and afar. We're going city to city supporting small business and entrepreneurs and leaders in local areas, as well as nonprofits. We're gonna be out there with positive vibes, connecting businesses, connecting local leaders. You're gonna get a big boost of energy. I get so emotional when I talk about being an entrepreneur. You're called to be an entrepreneur. And if you don't answer that, you know, you're really not honoring something that is truly can impact the world. I really do believe that. I'm excited to be a part of this event because it gives me the opportunity to really talk about what I'm passionate about. That is health and wellness and helping not only individual people, but companies. I'm looking forward for this event. Honestly, every event I go to, it's like it gives, it brings joy to my to, to my heart because I just love seeing everyone. I love the people. I love talking to everyone. And especially after the COVID and speaking to the camera, I just want to see everyone live. I want to show the world that small business owner is so important that we need to stand up and support them together. Because without them, our world will be 
broken. It's very important as a business owner to invest. Sometimes we invest in things that do not have a return on investment and we never uh, feel okay about that missed opportunity. But this is an opportunity you don't have to miss out on. The return on investment is not just dollars in your pocket, it's the exposure, it's the education, and it's the fact that you know you're a part of the ripple effect for your community. That ripple effect is the ROI that is endless and endless on return. Check out all the information on our page to learn more about our project, to learn about our documentary, and to learn how you can help out and other ways you might be able to help out beyond donating. We need your help. We need your financial support. We're not pulling any punches here. We want to make a difference. And our project, The Ripple Effect, is going to make an impact in the lives of people around the country. Please dig down deep. Help us make this an amazing tour and help us make this event something that will make history. Live from Arlington, Texas, it's the Dunham Business Radio Show, and here's your host, Lori Dunham. Welcome to the Dunham Business Radio Show. I am your host, Lori Dunham. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, boy, we've got a great show for you. As always, right, we've tried to bring the very best of guests from around the world right directly to you. Uh, thank you so much for being here. It's, it's a great honor. Uh, please ping your friends. Let them know that we're here. And um, we're going to have a great conversation today about something that everybody's impacted by. Um, before we jump in, I want to bring on my very favorite co-host from Austin, Texas. Uh, please make welcome to the show, Imani Simmons. Welcome. Hi. Thank you so much for having me, Lori. Good to see you again. Oh, yes. And I, I'm so excited about today's guest. So it's going to be a treat for everybody. Tell me why you're so, you're so pumped. Primarily because, as I think I talked with you a little bit earlier, his impact is more than just helping practices. The impact that he's making is going to improve patient care. It's going to create a better system in general. And one of the things I really like is that he is bold. He's going to tell the truth and he's here to show us some things that we could have easily not seen and his journey i only got the tip of the iceberg of his journey but i'm very excited to hear the rest of it awesome wow what a great setup we're gonna just jump right in because i'm super excited he's got a lot to say so i want to just get right going is that okay with you let's do this all right let's do it okay so from you know my experience and probably yours too you know most doctors are frustrated with working in a broken healthcare system well, Dr. Charles Webb discovered a practice model that allowed him to spend more one-on-one -on -one time with his patients, consistently experience better patient outcomes, which is right the key, the, the key, the whole goal of everything, and he was able to enjoy much higher profits. Most impressive is that he found a way to do this on just a four-day work week, leaving plenty of options for family time. How many times have you heard doctors don't have time, right? They're always at the hospital, they're always working, but he figured out a different plan. And this vision for a new model became an even bigger mission for him for the medical community as a whole. And this vision is called Freedom Practice Coaching. And they teach their clients a system that is proven to be a better way to practice, enabling them to achieve their financial goals while better impacting their patients' lives. And as you mentioned, Imani, he is here tonight to tell us more about it. So please help me make welcome to the show, Dr. Charles Webb. Thank you. Thank you, Hello, guys. Dr. Webb, and welcome. Thank you so much, and, and excited to be here, and thank you for the intro. 
Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm super excited. Thank you for taking the time. And uh, I know you're a busy guy. Um, so let's just jump right in, if that's okay. And tell yep. us a little bit more, tell the audience more about Dr. Webb. Where did you get your, where'd you go to school? And, and what was your dream when you first well, I grew up? I grew up in Kansas City, and I was kind of a, kind of a cowboy, if you will. I grew up, I was a city boy, but I would spend my summers working on ranches and, and uh, working with horses and so forth. And, and because of that, I, I, I decided to be a veterinarian, and I went to Kansas State University to become a vet. And through those studies, I found myself often spending a lot of time studying human physiology and anatomy because I'm also kind of a, a, a health nut, if you will. I've always wanted to be in the best shape I could. Jack LaLanne was a mentor of mine. And, and so my younger brother at the age of 14 developed juvenile rheumatoid arthritis and the medical community couldn't help him. He was losing the use of his right arm, his neck. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a bad situation. And they diagnosed him correctly, but the treatment protocol was 20 aspirin a day. And that wasn't going to go. It didn't fly with my, my parents. And it just so happened that his best friend's older brother was a chiropractor. I, I had no idea what that was. Never heard of it in my life. And what was interesting, the, the gentleman that I was uh, a good friend of mine back at, 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 at K-State, played on a football team, I found out that what he was doing, was training to be a chiropractor. It was really weird because I had no idea, but I but I ended up seeing my brother's life change, and he and he did completely turn around. He's a very healthy uh, gentleman, and and I decided that that would be the route that I would take. And so so I did that, and it was a wonderful career. I practiced from eighty six to ninety six, just ten years. And the reason I decided to get out is because I was uh, I was let down about really what we were guided to do. We, we were just like medical doctors, natural paths, whatever. We, we were taught and indoctrinated that the, the healing comes from us. And that's not true. That we're supposed to treat, we're supposed to give supplements, we're supposed to give, and I'm not saying there's not a place for these things, but I knew that my patients weren't getting where they should get because they weren't changing their lifestyle. And we had more of that in chiropractic. You know, we did study nutrition and so forth. In medical schools, they only have a half a day of nutrition. And so the, the, the challenge was this. I was fed up being a, what I felt as a technician. I had a very good a reputation. I had several practices. Financially, I had done well. But I didn't, I didn't get to see my daughter grow up because I was so in demand in the way that the system was to, to see patients constantly. And, and I got burnt out. And, and I said, this isn't worth it. And I left and I got into other industries and so forth. But I did end up coming back in 2004 and I had a conversation with my wife. The first thing I did was wrote a book about wellness. And I said, I'm going to go back in, but I'm going to do it my way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to become a mentor. I'm not going to be a distributor of goods and services. I'm going to be a mentor to my, to my, to my members, my family, uh, not my patients. Patience is just not a good word. It's used to indoctrinate us to think that we're the patient, we must be sick, and the doctor needs to fix us, and I'm entitled to because of insurance. So all that whole system, really, it, it, it's broken. And when I got back in, I studied a uh, specialty called functional medicine. And that really, just to simplify it, it's about un, uh, really determining what the true underlying cause of that patient's concerns for them, the member, right, the, the, that person's concerns. And then how to address that, uh, and yes, there could be certain treatments, there could be certain supplements, and there is, but primarily through changing this person's ideas and understanding and implement a different lifestyle. That's where health comes from. And so that's what I built. I built a practice and I didn't rely on insurance. I didn't rely on any of that stuff. I didn't rely on the, I, I stepped out of the red tape. I became a black sheep and I thrived and I had doctors from all over the country that found out about what I was doing and would call me and say, please teach, teach. And I started uh, Freedom Practice Coaching in 2011 on that model I built that would allow a, a better outcome for, for the patient, we'll call them patients now, the better outcome, better experience, empowerment, not, not symptom, not boo-boo treatment, empowerment for them to get their lifestyle back. At the same time, allowing the physician to enjoy a lifestyle. These physicians come out with $200,000 in debt. Right. You don't want to be seeing a physician that's ransacked by debt. They can't focus on you. So it helped them be able to be independent of the insurance company and be able to 
thrive and, and, and grow their practice while delivering a better experience and without so much time in the practice all the time. Because I think we should build our practice, our businesses. You, do, you work with entrepreneurs. We should build our business around our lifestyle. Family has is, is got to come up there, right? Yeah. I made mistakes, I, and, and I didn't want to do it. I got a 15-year-old boy, and when I started this again, uh, he, he, was, he was just born when mm -hmm. I started back. And so I decided, nope, I'm doing it a different way. And since then, we've worked with 500 uh, practitioners, mostly in the United States, but outside the United States as well. And the model is, is it just keeps getting better and better, and more and more doctors are doing this. And in time, my hopes is that we actually change this pendulum and people start seeing doctors as mentors, as teachers that support them, empower them, hold them accountable and celebrate with them on their achievements. So it's all about watching diseases go bye-bye because we get ahead of them when we're young, when we're kids. And a lot of these diseases would never even show their ugly face, yeah. but pharmaceutical companies don't want it that way. Right. And I was, I was thinking as you were speaking that, you know, when, when you go to medical school, I mean, I've never been to medical school, but I've been around doctors and, you know, uh, friends of mine who've graduated from medical school. And, you know, one of the things that they do first is they take an oath, right, to do no harm. And, um, but then they get out into the hospitals and not that they're hurting people, but they get, like you said, they get swayed by debt and, and pharmaceuticals and other things. And they don't really know the bottom line nutrition and um, really how to help their patients so so your model really just uh it reinforces this, this oath it does and it, to do no harm we are seeing so much corruption and again this is not i'm not here bashing doctors the majority of doctors right. when they move in to whether it's whether it's medical uh specialty chiropractic naturopath nurse practitioner they the most of them 90 percent of them have this this heart to help people. They have integrity. They have intention. And then they get in through the school and they find out there's no health being taught in these schools. Now, not all of them. I mean, you, you do get much more of it in, in certain approaches like chiropractic. We did get quite a bit of nutrition and lifestyle. And, and we knew that, hey, pharmaceuticals isn't the way to go. Is there a place for it? Yeah, when we go down the road, because we didn't handle things appropriately up front. Right. Uh, natural past too. They, they really work in more in line with wellness. And so, so there are those out there, but it, regardless, there's still this indoctrination that the doctor's job is to fix the patient. And that's a lie. Mm -hmm. And that puts a big burden on the doctors, but it also gives them the God complex, mm -hmm. right? The white coat, the God complex. And we think that, you know, we're needed. Well, you, you, you should be at a point where you're wanted, not needed. You're wanted to mm -hmm. go. Just like, my son needs me. Well, I hope he doesn't need me when he's 30 living in the basement, right? <laughs> I want him to want me and I want him to want my knowledge and my wisdom and my love, but, but not, you know, but, but, but so what, what happens is they go through school and we all believe what everything we're taught. We don't do the research ourselves. It's just the way it is. I mean, think back. I mean, there's so many things have changed that we said at one time, well, this is the truth. And we find out later, well, no, it's not. And so we have to wake up. We have to live consciously. I have a, a, another podcast called Wake Up With The Web, and it's all about doing your own research and standing up to the truth, discover the truth, or, or have that intention to go, to go do that. And if we're not taught health in school, then how can we support people? So unfortunately, no matter what specialty you are, most, most of us, we have to step out of school and get postgraduate training in this field called functional medicine, or at least nutrition and fitness. I mean, generally speaking, I would trust a personal trainer more often than probably 80% of the doctors to get someone into good health. Yeah. And that's, again, that's not a stamp on them. That's a stamp. That's a stomp down on a corrupt system that has been built against the practitioner, against the patient, and for the insurance companies and for big pharma. Yeah. It's, it's really... Um... It, it's it's almost the same thing with with business right and, you know we're we're taught in school all the the courses we're taught we're trained we're i want to say even brainwashed to be employees and so we graduate high school we go into college we're told to get a good job and you know graduate college get a good job and 
and then you end up working for an employer and that's all great. And there is a place for that. But if you're meant to be an entrepreneur, like, like me, um, you spend most of your life working for someone else and struggling the whole time saying, well, you know, I know I'm supposed to run a business and here I am working for an employer. Well, and, and, and that's so true. And see, things like finance get taken out of school back in the 60s because they didn't want people to learn uh, to actually be independent of the system, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, my son, he goes to a private school. I've never had him in a public school ever. Uh, I, don't, I don't appreciate what they teach. They're indoctrinating our children to become slaves to the system, like you said, employees. And parents... In time, they've been indoctrinated the same way, right? If we grow up in the family, get a good job and good benefits. What does yeah. that mean? Good benefits? So I'm going to take this $40,000 job because I, I want someone to pay for my $300 a month benefits when I could go out and learn to earn $60,000 or $100,000 right. whenever and pay for my own damn benefits, right? right. And, it's, and it's really this indoctrination that we all – just fall into, we're all guilty of it. We've all fallen into it, right? But my son, you know, he's in high school now and we, we're looking at colleges. And again, it's gonna be a private college, but the colleges that we found and what we're looking into are entrepreneurial colleges. Mm. Now, that's not to state that my expectation is him to be his own boss and all that. I'm gonna support him so he can, if that's what he chooses. And so the schooling he's going to get, he's going to learn how to thrive in the real world, not become a worker bee. And it's his choice at that time. If he finds employment that matches what he wants the best, I'll support him. But I want to support him to the point to where he knows I can leave anytime. I can do what I want. I'm in charge of my life. And some people, their calling will be a business owner, whatever. Other callings will be, now that's, I, I don't want the headache of that, but I've learned to master a lot of those business principles, such as my own finance. So I can work with this individual. I can learn how to move up in the company and I can learn how to invest my money. Yeah. They don't absolutely. teach that at school. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And even entrepreneurial classes are, are fairly new. Um, I mean, I was a late bloomer. I graduated college in 2012. Um, so, you know, it's fairly recent for me. But um, I remember my senior year in college was the first time they introduced an entrepreneurship class. And yeah. I was thinking, why? You know, this should have been way given way back in, in grammar school. But um, so, you know, you and me, you know, we're, we're two of the same kind, I think, where we're speaking out against the structure, right? The business structure, the medical structure. Um, is there any concern that, you, you know, there's a lot of pushback that, you know, oh, the insurance companies or pharma no, companies, the, they, they so, want you to be quiet about it. So of course they do. And, and of course, you know, I'm out there and I've, of course, I've been, you know, uh, amongst some of their, their, their flailings and so forth. But you know what? That's, we're, we're created in greatness. And I'm not one to live my life in fear. I, that's not who I am. That's not how I was created. And once you know the truth, and, and again, I'm not putting my efforts so much on what I'm against. And let me make this clear. When I first started freedom practice coaching, my job, my passion, my purpose was to, to allow doctors to work on their own terms and build a practice around their lifestyle and give patients what they truly need, a teacher. That was, my, that was part of it. The other part of the mission was to disrupt the old model, to disrupt it. Those are both great, but why do I need to focus on disrupting something? If I can just make something better and just put all my focus in that, it'll go bye-bye. Yeah. So our, what our mission is here at Freedom Practice Coaching right now is change 10 million lives in the next 10 years. That's it. Change 10 million lives in the next 10 years. And we can only do that by bringing in like-minded doctors, help them with their mindset, help them... Be, bring, get their courage back, help them step up and say, you know what? I can't do this. There's so many doctors today, especially going through this, you know, the, the C word, the virus. I won't say it cause it'll probably pull your show off. <laughs> they, they can't, they can't live with themselves. They're getting to a point. They're seeing the corruption in the hospital. They're seeing the number skew. They're seeing all this stuff. They're seeing that people are, are being taken care of in, in a, in a rational manner. And they're saying, you know what? Some of them are getting out and they're going, I can speak up. 
Will I risk my job? If you're working in the hospital, you will. And it takes, I, I get it. It takes guts. Do I risk mine? Do Yes, I do. And you know what? That's okay. Because I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to keep teaching. I'm going to keep. And in, in time, I just believe standing for the truth as you, as you go and you, and you, and you, really truly research that out, right? Too many of us today have just made this stance of, well, whatever I hear is true. I'm guilty. I've done it. I've listened to things. Oh, that, and then I go, oh, whoa, whoa. you shouldn't have sent that out, Charlie, you idiot. You should have studied it and looked in the back because I've done it. And so I'm as guilty as anyone, but now my habits have gotten stronger and stronger. I read something. I dig in. I research. I, okay. Now I can see this, but I can also see how someone else looks at it from a different angle. And the only way that we can come together is if I open up and, and, and understand, I would think just like you, if I had your information. And so we can come together and start having a conversation, understanding each other. And I'm trying to do this in this situation as well. I'm not, I'm not directly attacking the, 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 this model. I'm going after the doctor saying there's a better way. Yeah. Can I teach you? Would you, are you open? Bring yeah. the skepticism. I'm okay with it. Are you open? Do you want to keep living this way? Do you know there's a better way, but you just don't know how to get there? Can we have a conversation? And so that's the, the best way we can handle that. And, 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 and again, I don't have to attack. I don't think that helps anyone. It's just like Uber never attacked the taxi industry. They just created a better model. Yeah. Right? So and I kind of want to Uber, kind of want Uber healthcare. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's really great that you start with the mindset, you know, that's so important and, and, and really to talk to the doctors and bring them back to why they went to medical school in the beginning. You know, when you can tap into the why and live your life based on the why, everything else falls into place and it actually creates a ripple effect. It does. And, and you're so right on there um, because when they do go back and they listen to their heart, they start having more courage because it really does come down to that, right? Yeah. It's, it's like what you said earlier. Well, I'm, I'm making this much money and some specialists today still, still do pretty well. I'm making this much money. If I rock the boat, I challenge that. Man, I got two kids to put through college. Man, I, and so what happens is the blinders come on. And I, I'm not knocking them. I get it. It's a scary situation. But the blinders come on, and they don't want to see anymore because it will hold them accountable if they do. I mean, I talk to people all the time on, let's take a look at the new CD, CDC report that's come out on this virus. Let's see what, well, I don't want to see that. It, it's, it's, it's almost... That just that no uh, wait wait a minute we're supposed to go after and find the truth so look at the research that's there dig in it is what it is and so I feel for them I have empathy for them but I can tell you my lifestyle my love for what I do the time I spend with my family the kind of results I got when I was in practice the kind of results I get with these my clients my doctors. Being able to change lives, you, you can't put a price on that. Mm -hmm. you, you just can't. That's, that's what makes me and my, I got an entire team here that has the same passion. If something happened, I, I, and I'm honest about this, Lori, if something happened to me tomorrow, this company wouldn't, wouldn't skip a beat. Mm. This company would go on because it's the mission. It's these, all these people are in line with it and they're just, Every day they focus on how can we keep changing healthcare in this country and supporting these doctors that had just been in bondage. Mm -hmm. You know what, you said something earlier um, just a few minutes ago about how the doctors, they get blinders on, right? And, and that's so much like entrepreneurs. I mean, and, I, and I'm, I keep relating it because, you know, our audience is entrepreneurial and um, you know, so many times we look at the fear and the debt and, and what society says we ought to be doing. So, you know, and, and I went through this myself, a roller coaster over the last uh, years, you know, <laughs> I went okay. through it myself, you know, like I, I want to be a business owner. 
so I don't have a job. So I'm going to be a business owner. And then all of a sudden the bills start coming and, and I can't make the business pay for my life. So I go get a job and yeah. I justify, well, if I just went and got a job, I can use their money right. to have, you know, and it's just a constant roller coaster, you know, just like the doctors, like, okay, I've got these bills. I've, you know, got these student loans and I know I went to school for a particular reason, but it's just not lining up with reality and the truth of things. And so it really takes people of courage to step out of a system that we've been indoctrinated yeah. to and say, no more, no but, more. Yeah, but here's, here's, here's the quagmire. And if people would think about this, and I know you've done this. If you take a Rubik's cube, right? The first time I looked at a Rubik's cube, I was in college. I couldn't figure <laughs> that thing out i'm not the i'm not the smartest tack in the box i just couldn't figure it out and i roomed with the smartest guy in the fraternity he was a chemical engineer and he was also one of the guys that really got me into fitness he was he was built like arnold and it was just he was the smartest guy everyone all night long everyone in the fraternity would come by and knock on the door hey tim but anyway he, he figured this rubik's cube out and and so i was while well, i was working with it one day and he said hey let me show you something and he showed me this formula and I could always figure it out. No matter how you hand it to me, I could figure it out and sometimes get it done, you know, within like, you know, three, four minutes. And so my point, my point is this, the Rubik's cube, I, no matter how hard I work at it, how long I work at it, if I don't know the formula, I'm going to go back and get a job. Yeah. Right. So right. The, the challenge is people and think about this people are getting into businesses that have no business getting into businesses. They haven't had a coach. It's, it's like a cordon blue chef. This is like doctors opening practice, a cordon blue chef. Oh, I'm going to open up a restaurant. Well, I hope not because unless you're a restaurant or newer, you're going to get your butt handed to you. That's right. The cook in the kitchen doesn't have the expertise to run the business. So if before I opened my business as an entrepreneur, I had a coach to show me, how to do that Rubik's cube. I'm going to be successful because I'm working with someone that knows the formulas. The biggest advice I can give your listeners, if you're in a business or you want to get in business and it's important to you and your family, start looking into coaches. I can't tell you, I've invested well over $600,000 into coaches. I still have coaches and I coach. I'll never be without a coach. My son has had, I can't tell you how many coaches my son's had and everything that's important to me. He was a pitcher. He had a pitcher that was, that, that, that was a, a ex, ex uh, uh, pro taught him pitching. He had a batting coach, ex pro. He's had a, he's had a saxophone coach. He's gone to entrepreneurial camps. He's, I mean, if you want to succeed and thrive and get rid of the uncertainty and the overwhelm and the fear, work with someone that can show you how to do the Rubik's cube. And people look at coaches sometimes and they think, oh, well, that's an expense I can't. No, that's the most important employee that you'll ever hire. And if you don't, you're gonna have what we call lost opportunity. Yeah. So if I've got some doctors, they, they start working with us and they go, increase their, their 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 business and their revenue by eighty thousand dollars a month within the first year okay then i got other doctors they didn't do anything this year they held off it's an expense they didn't grow this year they lost a million dollars because of their decision to look at working with someone that knows more than as an expense rather than an investment and I think that if people would do that, I know you've had coaches, don't try to figure out the Rubik's Cube by yourself. Find the right people. And, and you, you, you might have a coach for two months, and then the next one might be a year, then you might have one for, I mean, keep, go, keep working with them at the level that you get to next. And you're going to get to a level where you're going to have some unbelievable, I've had some pretty phenomenal coaches in the industry, and it's always been, the best place for me to park my time and my money.
Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I like to think of our show as a little bit of a coach. Uh, we bring experts on and we talk about the journeys and we share lessons learned and lives learned and stuff. And, and so it's really interesting. You talk about the, the Rubik's Cube. I remember when I was a kid, the Rubik's Cube, you know, was, was around. I could never solve it. I, you know, like you, I, I didn't have the formula. And what's interesting is comparing that to life. Um, in the journey that I've been on, you know, that Rubik's Cube, um, some of my classmates would take all the stickers off and they would put them all on the right way. And, <laughs> and so it's kind of like in life, you know, you're not really digging down deep to change the cube. You're just making yourself shiny on the outside and you're not doing the deep work that it takes to, oh, so the, to take that courage. Yeah. Take so that never, jump. So the, the courage you said, the fear never goes away. Right. You didn't figure it out. You have no foundation of truth. Right. You lied to yourself. Absolutely. And you just do the, do, you do the sticker. So yeah, Imani. I wanted to say, you know, I love, I know you said you have a podcast as well. And um, for myself as a coach, you know, the first thing I did was get a coach. But what I find with coaching is that coaching is often the first place where people start to wake up right? Where you can start kind of shaking somebody and saying, hey, you know what, actually, let's just try to change our mindset this way. And Dr. Webb, I love the fact that you are not only, you know, a free, your freedom, you're giving freedom, you're in, in improving patient care, but you're also committed to waking people up and saying, think, and you know what, I'm going to be your teacher, but I'm not here to heal you. Your body is designed to heal yourself. So it's, right. it's this thing where the coaching door opens people's minds so many times that coaching is so powerful and the fact that it's the first time you can kind of get somebody to start thinking for themselves and maybe get some of that fear out of their own way because they can trust their coach and i love that you have a podcast that also addresses this yeah can you tell us again what that podcast is called for our listeners Wake up with web web wonderful thank you and where yeah. can they find you is it on itunes or what what platforms are you on it's a facebook platform uh, okay. but, you know, wake, wake up with web. And we just started, we've already started getting some, some pretty incredible guests. And my intention is to bring them from all, all walks of life. Right. Uh, there, there, there's going to be a, 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 a place for entrepreneurs. There's going to be a, a place for faith. There's going to be a place for family. There's going to, it's going to be well-rounded about living. Look, we got one chance in this life and I don't want to sleep through it. Right. And, I, you know, I use this term all the time. So many people really are living in the matrix. And, it, and it's like we all do to a certain extent. It's your job to find out what's real and to live fully. I, I live every day like this is my last day. I really do. Every day I assume, Charlie, you got this day. What are you going to do with it? And at the end of the day, I have to ask myself, did you live? Did you live or did you waste it? Because you will never get it back. And I can't live in a state of fear, which is just really it's it's an illusion in my own head unless someone's actually you know assaulting me or, or something like that it's 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 really called anxiousness right it, it's not true fear fear is when i have to run and, and develop courage to fight the bear anxiety is just this illusion of what's going to happen in the future and that's where people live they live in the future and there's what, what i call an anxiety gap you can't live there right you live now and if you live fully now and you get around the right people to support you that have already done it, then you're going to build that courage and you're going to live fully. And man, life's pretty sweet. No matter what's going on, there's always gonna be challenges. I mean, the crisis that we've gone through, I saw opportunity. My business grew 50% in the last so many months because of this, my, my clients have grown because we see the opportunity not simply the crisis. Crisis gives us an opportunity to change and make things better. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I know that your practice mostly focuses with doctors, but what can the patient community do to support you? Well, look, you know, um, we have so many doctors around the States. You know, we, we, we actually started doing some, some, some marketing, just broad scope to let people know here's this is what our doctors do and so we're actually we're actually getting out and getting this message out through webinars and everything else to let people know there's a better way to live and and these and so they can reach back to us 
and we'll find a doctor in their area, even if they're virtual, that they can work with one of these doctors. Again, we've got them all over the country and we want to introduce people. And now because of the virtual situation, they can, they can work with the one that fits them the best. doesn't have to be in their backyard. Yeah. But we want to educate the community. Look, guys, for those of you that are okay co-laboring in your care, that want to take control, there's doctors out there that have the knowledge and the wisdom to support you. And if you want them, that let us help you find those people. All right, excellent. So, so um, your practice is called Freedom Practice Coaching. And if doctors wanted to get, reach out to you, if they wanted to learn more about what you're doing, what's the best way for them to reach you? Um, well, you know, for, for one, they can go to, they can go to my... Um, website freedompracticecoaching.com and that way there's a lot of information i know a lot of people I, one of my pet peeves is i just sometimes i like to pick the phone up and say hey direct me what's the best way for me to get information and so i'll, I'll let me let me give you a number here if someone feels like that might be a better situation just to get the information they need they can call 210-394-3953 210-394 and for 3953 that'll be erica and she'll just she'll be their liaison their concierge if you will and, and help guide them to getting more information learning about us being able to speak to some of our our clients our doctors and so forth mm -hmm. wow that such an amazing amount of information and, and i'm really uh empowered by just listening about your mission and you know um, where you're going and you know, I'm grateful that I haven't had to have a lot of medical care, but as I get older, you know, uh, those concerns are in the back of my head. Am I doing the right thing today to have a better life tomorrow? And, and maybe by the time I get to that point, there'll be doctors that have the same passion and mission that you have. And, and it'll all be, it'll all be copacetic. <laughs> well, so, um, I, I have a lot of hope and that's what I live with. And my intentions are going to be just keep doing it until the day that, that I'm no longer needed here. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all, it's all about hope, right? Yeah. Uh, so Imani, thank you so much for co-hosting today. I appreciate you jumping in on the conversation and, and Dr. Webb, thank you for what you're doing. You're, you're, oh, thank you, you so know. much for having me. And man, I got to tell you, I I'm pretty impressed. You, you're, you're, you're telling me you just got out of college in 2012. You've done an impressive job as an entrepreneur. So, wow. so thanks for what you're doing, you know, great. Thank very much. You. Imani, thanks for sharing. It was nice having a conversation with you as well. Thank, Thank you so, you much, so much. We appreciate what you doing. God bless you guys. And uh, so, um, and to, uh, you know, um, if you want to reach out to Dr. Webb, um, be sure to check out his website and um, please share this video with people out in your community. They need to know about doctors that have a heart and a mission, just like Dr. Webb. And, um, you know, you can get the word out and you don't have to be a doctor to do it. Just share this video. Um, let people know how to reach Dr. Webb. And if you have somebody you'd like to bring on the show and you have a guest that you think would be great for our audience, would love to connect with them, just send us an email to dunhambusinessradio at gmail.com. And uh, it's going to wrap it up for us tonight. But please stay tuned and stay connected with us. We've got a lot of great things coming down the pipe. So um, until next week, everybody, stay on top of the world. Thanks for listening to the Dunham Business Radio Show. Be sure to follow us at Dunham Business Radio and check out DunhamBusinessRadio.com for more info. I'm on top of the world, now I'm living. And the good just gets better, keeps a giving. Not even close to the end.